Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a empty slash declutter video. Once again, I'm always surprised how much trash I go through and how quickly. Also, I often, the more makeup I buy and skincare and whatnot, the more often I have to declutter things I'm not using anymore that I don't want. So today's video is going to feature a lot of mostly makeup that I'm decluttering that I didn't finish that I don't like anymore and I'm going to separate out the makeup that I use quite a bit of. I didn't completely finish but I made a good try and I got a good dent <laughs> into the product. So I'll separate out those and then I'll show you at the end the makeup that I am just decluttering. I didn't get through a lot of it and I didn't use that much. Um, so I'll save that for the end, but I am going to show you my empties first, my trash. So let's get started. I am very no makeup today. It is a lazy Sunday for me and I need to clean up my place. And I thought, you know what? I have all this stuff I've collected. It's time to do a new video first while the sun is still out. So let's get into my trash. I am filming this at the end of September. By the time you see this video, it'll probably be October, but you'll know it is about the end fall time, 2022. So let's get into it. I have my everything categorized by bag, so I'm gonna make some bag noise, sorry. I'm gonna start with body care because it's the smallest category. Just so you guys know, if you are like, why do people like empties or declutter videos? It's because it's usually a great time to get people's full on opinions about a product after it's completely used. Will they repurchase it? Will they not? Or if they're decluttering, they didn't finish it, why? It's always helpful. It's also honestly, the main videos that I update you on all the stuff I've been using, if I'm gonna repurchase, if I've already repurchased. Think of it as an update video, especially if you're thinking about getting a product that I mention. I usually cannot do full on description box of everything I mentioned in the video because it's a lot, it's just way too long. So stay tuned, you can skip ahead to the category that you're interested in in the timestamps below. Let's get into body care. My smallest category this month, but still notable. Um, I went through a few hand washes. Let's start with those. Uh, this one is from Aesop. This is the Resurrection Aromatique Hand Wash. This is the Mandarin Rhymed Rosemary Leaf Cedar Atlas scent. This is a cleansing gel for your hands. And this I got a long time ago. <laughs> So this is taking me quite a bit of time to go through. I put this in my kitchen at the kitchen sink, which if I was doing more cooking, I would probably use this more. Um, I generally go through my bathroom soap more quickly, but I liked the scent of it. I thought it was like a nice citrus scent more than anything. It did effectively clean my hands, but I did feel like a lot of product came out with every pump. It was almost too much. Some people let me like that. I thought it was wasteful. Um, and I, I don't know if they refill these now, but I didn't see it when I ordered this from Selfridges that you could buy refills from that website. So while this is a plastic bottle, it's pretty, it would be nice to like buy a glass one and refill it like other companies are doing these days. So I hope they go in that direction. I personally think this is overrated. It cleans well, but the scent to me isn't spectacular. I would prefer my Diptyque hand wash, um, but this is, I don't know, it's okay. I'm not going to repurchase or run out and repurchase, but there are other scents. Maybe there's other scents you guys out like from this brand, let me know. Please comment below. A hand wash I got from Zara that I went through. This was at my boyfriend's house. I got the Patchouli 1972 from Zara Home. Um, this one is on the smaller size. We went through it quickly, but it was $9.90 for 250 mils. A little pricey. Um, I like the scent of it. it. It certainly does smell like patchouli. Not overwhelming, nice and green. And I liked it. Uh, the problem with Zara, they don't always consistently have the same things. So 
if you see this while you're in store or online, sure, pick it up. Just know this is pretty small, so maybe a guest bathroom or an area where you're not gonna like fly through it. Um, it smells good though. It does say for body as well, so remember it's on the small side. So speaking of Diptyque, I got I went through this Doosan shower oil. This was a yellow oil. It's very tuberose, white floral scented. And I was surprised how quickly this one I went through because I feel like I didn't use it that often. Um, shower oils, they're nice, they're hydrating, but they don't like clean the best in my opinion. So I would use them every once in a while, just kind of rotate through my body washes. I don't know if it was the heat. I get to have a very hot apartment. Um, I try not to run the AC constantly if I'm not home. Um, and I feel like this one was evaporating and it, I was going through it because of that, not so much that I was actually using it. So I don't know if the pump design is not meant for very hot temps, but I felt like it was evaporating. Like it, it something was happening. Like I wasn't really touching it, but it was just going down. So I thought that was odd. I went to a deep dip diptyque store recently in Vegas. And, um, if you guys haven't seen that video already, I purchased a different scent of their shower wash. It's not a shower oil though, so I'm hoping that will help. I got I got the body gel and the full of psycho scent, which is a fig scent instead of this. Um, but I didn't get this one exactly. But I got something similar. So um, another body wash that actually took me a long time to go through. This is the Jordan Samuel After Show Body Cleanser. I really wanted to like this. This is 200 mils, eight fluid ounces. And so this body wash, it's very hydrating. I wouldn't say it, it's almost like a lotion replacement if you don't like lotions, but it, it wouldn't feel like it really cleansed my skin. It's just a little bit off for me. I, I don't, like I like the texture, but it almost melted so quickly. Like when you, it touched water on your skin, it just kind of dissolved super fast. So I felt like I had to use a lot. Um, it's an interesting product, um, very different. I think it's easy to kind of misunderstand what it's for. It's really like a hydrating thing in the shower, more than a cleanser. So I just feel like it didn't translate well for a body wash. I think it just needs to be different. Maybe just a, a body gel is necessary, maybe not this formula. So I won't be repurchasing this. This is the Sol de Janeiro body lotion that's fragrance free. I actually took off the branding because it came unglued. I don't, like I like the pump, but the packaging, I like the formula of the lotion. I don't like the price, but the packaging could have been better. Like the, the stick didn't go all the way to the bottom, so the pump wouldn't work anymore. The branding around the top would just kind of slide around. It was weird. Um, so I think they can improve the packaging. I know they wanted to keep kind of the classic Sol de Janeiro shape, but with the pump, it doesn't quite work, but I went through it quickly. I liked it. I liked it using it this summer. Two deodorants I went through are from the Secret Clinical Strength line. Um, they're slightly different. I believe this is the unscented and this is the stress response. I don't know what the difference is really. I think they have the same exact radiant, same exact size. Um, it has 20% aluminum zirconium antiperspirant ingredient. Oh, I see this one expired last year. Yikes. I think one of these was in my travel bag that I went through. And I think the other one I was using regularly, um, but it was summer. So I went through things quickly and I traveled a little bit. So went through two of those and that's really it for the body care. Okay, my second biggest category of empties is hair care, of course. I always go through lots of hair care um, and I'm also incorporating some trash from my boyfriend's place because I purchased things for him and he's gone through them. So I'm just gonna throw in a couple things. Uh, shampoo first. I don't know if I've shown this empty on my channel before. I don't know why I'm keeping it. You can refill the Orbe giant bottles. These are the one liter size. I don't know that I'm gonna purchase refills from Orbe because they're so expensive. I don't know. I, I might hold on to this one a little bit longer. This is the Gold Lust shampoo, which I really like. It's their Repair and Restore line. 
giant bottle you can refill but it doesn't look so pretty after being in the shower to be honest um i don't know that i like this packaging for refill so i don't know i'm considering <laughs> honestly getting some cheaper more or less expensive shampoo refills for my boyfriend because he shampoos every day i don't so i go through shampoo a lot less often and he's flying through these expensive shampoos and so I'm like hmm, maybe not anyways I was using the smaller size at home and this took me a lot longer to go through um, but I have an empty of this now and what I replaced it with is the refillable Kerastase blonde absolute shampoo this is the Lumiere like their clear gel shampoo for blonde highlighted hair I got the refillable bottle and that is what I'm currently using now for my regular cleansing before I use my purple toning shampoo. I think right now what my boyfriend, actually he may on, be on to his second refill, but this is the Kerastase Nutritive Bane Satin 2. This is the first one I bought for him with his refill bottle. Now he's using, I believe a different shampoo with the refill bottle. I think it's the Genesis one that he's using. Anyways, these are the empty refills I have of shampoo. Conditioner. I finally finished like, my Virtue Recovery Conditioner. This is one of my favorite conditioners. This took me a really long time to go through because I wash my hair twice a week. Consistently through the pandemic, that's what I was doing. And also, I wasn't using this on Sundays when I would do a deep conditioning mask. So I went through this one really slowly. I think this 500 milliliter size. I think it took me at least two years to get through, but this is just me using it. This is no one else. And I'm, you know, me using it like once a week it took a long time, but I really like the creaminess for my texture, color treated blonde hair. It's nice. Um, but right now I'm using the Kerastase Sika Flash conditioner, the purple toning one been loving that so I'm using that instead of this right now okay let's get into masks real quick um I have this Kerstas chroma absolute mask chroma filler little travel sample here I finally went through it I like this one it's not as much hydration as I would like but it smells nice I think if you have just regular color treated hair meaning you know it's not blonde you're not bleaching it I think you'll like this mask for your hair um, I just need a little bit more creaminess hydration to my masks but this wasn't bad but I finished it and then I've finished another one of these the Christoph Robin shade variation mask this is the baby blonde this is a purple toning mask I think Oh, I've repeat purchased this several times. I have another one in my shower right now. What I like about this one is it's a deep, deep dark purple. It does a great job at toning. It smells good and it's also pretty hydrating for a toning mask. Toning anything can be very harsh on the hair, especially shampoos. Even toning conditioners can be a little bit harsh, but this one I really like and repeat purchase for me. Let's see, oils. I have a couple oils here. The Kerastase Chronologiste. This is the perfumed one. I felt this was smelled really good, really luxurious, kind of a nice unisex scent, not too florally. Um, did I feel like it was better than their regular oil, hair oil? No. I mean, it did have that specific perfume scent, but and it has this nice luxe glass packaging, but I don't think it's really worth getting over their other oil. I had a travel size of the Blonde Absolute Sika Extreme Oil, which has Edelweiss, different scent. Um, I like their oils in general. I can't really complain, but if you had to pick one, of the over, uh, oh, one over the other, I would pick the less expensive one, to be honest. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, whatever appeals to you, in my opinion. I haven't picked up a new hair oil from Kerastase, but I have picked up a repeat purchase from Shu Amura. It's their Camilla oil that I picked up that I really like the texture and smell of. 
Um, okay, so treatments, I have the Scalp Soothing Essence from Ameliorate. I think this is a UK brand. Um, and I, yeah, mm -hmm, UK brand. Um, this is one of those sprays that you put on your scalp. Um, I feel like it was just a hydrating one and I don't feel like it did too much for me. Maybe a temporary relief. I would not pick this up again. This guy, the K18 Biomedic Hair Science Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. This is a really tiny 15 milliliter size and my hair a little bit came out with the pump. Oh, <laughs> there's a little bit left. This smells good. It smells really fresh. Um, I flew through it. Um, I'm tempted to maybe pick this up the larger size, maybe with a Sephora sale and get 20% off. Um, but I didn't feel like it was so good. I need to, to rush out and buy it full price, but I did feel like it helped a little bit. I think what stops me from getting the bigger one is you're supposed to put it in your hair and skip conditioner and anything else, which doesn't really work for me. It's not that hydrating for me. So I don't know. I'm on the fence about this just for my hair type. I usually need a lot in my hair to make it feel soft and good and, you know, prevent damage. Um, so I don't know if this replaces all of those products. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I know you're not supposed to use this every day, but every once in a while to do that would probably be fine. It's, they have a shampoo now. I'm curious about that. It's just a very new line. I know a lot of you guys seem to love it. I'm just a little skeptical. So I'm not rushing out to repurchase just yet. I have two side-by-side -side pro similar products here. Same parent company, L'Oreal. We have the Kerastase um, and the uh, L'Oreal El Vive. So they're slightly different things. So this is a chroma gloss or hair gloss that you can put on at home. This is about $50. I don't think it's worth it. I did a whole video on this and I didn't real, really see much of a difference, but I have blonde hair. It's harder to see glosses and shines really work that well on me. Uh, if you have darker hair, this will probably work better, but it's a lot of money for what it is for something very temporary. This is not a gloss, but it's a smoothing out kind of temporary treatment that you put on for me when I want to straighten out, straighten and blow dry my hair out and, you know, make it look really smooth and just make the brush go through easier. I like using this. This is less than $10. I have another one of these that I'm using in my shower right now definitely worth your money. All right, last hair care thing. This is a, what is this brand? Living Proof Perfect Hair Day. This is the heat styling spray. Um, heat protectant up to 450 degrees. You, I put this on when I'm going to heat style my hair and my hair is already dry. So mostly for like flat ironing, if I'm gonna curl my hair or something with a curling iron, I'll put this on before I do that to protect it from burning off. Um, I think this works well enough, but I feel like the mist on it, every time I use it, it makes me cough and gag. It's just, there's something about it that really irritates me. I do have another full size of it that I'll probably use, but I ended up switching brands to DP Hue, which you can get at Ulta, and I prefer that one a lot more. It doesn't seem to make me gag as much as this one. But I do recommend heat styling spray, especially if you are prone to damage like me. But even if you have really healthy hair, you still should probably use it if you're gonna put that amount of heat on your on your hair. All right, so that's it for hair care. That took a while. All right, on to skincare. Quite a few products in this category. Sometimes I just really fly through skincare, especially cleansers, it seems like. I'm just like using them up. Okay, so first things first, let's get into cleansers. I have Allies of Skin Molecular Silk Amino Hydrating Cleanser. Um, this is 100 mils, 3.4 fluid ounces, has a pH of 5.5. .5. I will not be repurchasing this guy again because it felt like a nice texture. 
I felt like it could have done a little bit better of job of removing makeup. I think as a regular daily cleanser, not removing makeup, it was just fine. I didn't feel like it moved mountains though for the price. Um, and I felt like I decanted it when I was traveling to use it as a makeup remover for my face. And <laughs> this is a weird complaint, but the cleanser stuck to the walls of the little plastic bottle I put it in and I could not get it out. So I felt like it wasted a lot of product because it was not one of those that easily just comes right out. Like you just, it was just stuck to the walls and I was like, oh, this is not gonna work. <laughs> Um, so it's not really great for travel or decanting. It's this orange formula here. Also, the smell is fragrance free, but it smells pretty bad. So that was a big turn off. Like I like a good cleansing experience and that was a really negative part about this guy. Um, also fairly expensive for what it is. I mean, it feels good. The texture is really nice, but other than that, I can't say too many positive things about it that it did like amazing things for me. So I won't be picking it up. This is the Drunk Elephant Slay Makeup Melting Cleanser. I, some of the packaging, the letters came off here. This I've had for a while. I think it came in like a Christmas set that I got. This is a cleansing balm. Um, I felt the texture of this was pretty bad for how expensive Drunk Elephant is. It's just a hard waxy balm cleanser that I did not love the experience of it and I didn't like the smell of it. I just thought this is not great at all. So I don't recommend this one. I won't be picking up probably much from Drunk Elephant in the future anyway, but uh, especially not this product. Uh, this is one of my favorite makeup removers. This is Jordan Samuel After Show Treatment Cleanser. Um, this is one of the few repeat purchase makeup removers in my collection. I have another one of this in the works that I'm using right now. And I do like this for removing makeup, but if I have a lot of stubborn makeup on, I find this works best with a cleansing cloth or, you know, kind of doing it twice. You really kind of have to work it in. It's not like the perfect makeup remover, but the texture of it is really wonderful. and. It's not as expensive as some of these other ones I've been showing you. And I like the big size of it. This is uh, 240 mils, a lot of product in here. And I just, I like it. This is the IX Clinical Cleansing Complex. I think this is one of their most uh, popular products. I had a smaller one, I bought the bigger one. I had been using this at my boyfriend's house. I went through it. I noticed after a while, I don't know if water got in it, but it started getting really chunky at the end, the texture, which is weird because it's like a clear gel. I don't know what happened. Um, my biggest complaint with this is the packaging. Too much product comes out at once when you squeeze it out. So I was like really flying through it because I was overusing it, wasting product. So I didn't love that, but I do think this is an effective deep cleanser. It does really a, a good job of removing makeup. So I was using this um, as a second cleanse uh, to make sure all my impurities are off um, after using my oil cleanser. So I was using this at his place and now I'm out. But I do have a youth to the people cleanser at his place that I'll be using instead of this. Um, so that's it for cleanser empties. I do have... <laughs> This guy is not empty, but I think it's about time to go because I, this is pretty old. This is the Versed Baby Cheeks All-in-One Hydrating Milk. It was nice and light and hydrating, kind of essence -y toner stuff that you can get at, at Target. I mean, I think if you've never tried anything like this, you may like it. I feel like it wasn't hydrating enough. It's really light though. So, I mean, depending on your skin type, this might be good enough for you, but for me, I wasn't impressed. I've, 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 I've used other things. I have other things that are better in my collection. So I got like halfway through it and I haven't really, I think it's time to go. So that is a declutter for me. I don't go through masks that often. This is the Biologique Recherche Mask Visio Plus. This is way expired, yeah. 
It expired a year ago, October 2021. So I was using it way beyond the date. Um, but this is a very expensive mask that I thought would be more hydrating because it says long lasting moisturizing face mask. And I felt like it didn't do much for my dehydration. I felt like it wasn't moisturizing enough. So I used it up. I mean, I don't know what it really did for me, but I will not be repurchasing this again. I'm, I'm pretty skeptical now of Biologique Recherche ma Recherche's masks. The one I really like is the Vernix and the, the cream mask Vernix, which is super hydrating. Um, it kind of creates a cocoon effect on the skin, but also their very popular exfoliating mask, the Mask Vivant, that one I really like. Um, I have tried samples of some really nice other masks, but they're very pricey, so I don't know. I have some other masks from Chantecai I'm using right now, and so I'm not going to be repurchasing any masks from Biologique Recherche anytime soon. Just wanted to mention that one. A facial mist. I just finished this up. This took me a while, but I started really consistently using it a lot lately, and then I ended up flying through it. Basically, anytime I would, twice a day, I would put this on after I wash my face to kind of rehydrate and then start my skincare routine. Because I was finding that my face was really dry in between washing it and starting my skincare routine. So this helped. I didn't love the scent of this, but it had like rose, uh, lavender in it. But I actually felt like this was really hydrating and not just water. This is the Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerator Moisturizing Facial Mist. I like that one. I'm not going to repurchase because I have another mist from Jordan Samuel that I will use up that I kind of stopped using. Okay, let's get into serums and more essences and stuff. This is, I have a couple things from Lyra Clinical. This is the Pro Light Serum. This is the vitamin C serum that I've repeat purchased. And this is the Biohydra Infusion Serum. Very plumping, hydrating step. I Now I believe Lyra is really hard to get online these days without like sending an email first. You kind of, they want it so you have a consultation with a spa these days. So I haven't repurchased because of that, I don't wanna deal with that hassle. Um, if I really get desperate and I really miss these, I will go through that process, but yeah, they're becoming more strict selling online. So that's kind of an issue <laughs> for me. This is a little vial of the Future Cosmetics Boutique Beauty Drops number one. I like this, um, very expensive brand, similar packaging to Biologique Recherche. Um, I don't know that I loved it so much, but I feel like I liked it better than some of the serums I've tried from Biologique Recherche. I don't know, it's it's kind of one of those things where you can just fly through serums really quickly. So I don't know, is it worth it? I'm not sure. I haven't repurchased it since I used it up. This guy I have used in the past. This is the Sulwasu First Care Activating Serum. This is different than the original ones that were really popular. I like it. Um, it's 60 mils. It's a good amount of product. Has a nice luxury glass bottle. Um, I would use this like after my hydrating spray. It's a first step. Uh, I like it. It's got that ginseng earthy scent. Um, do I need it in my routine right now? Probably not, but it's probably something that's going to come back at some point. Um, I do really like it. Okay, a couple of eye creams um, that I've gone through. The Jordan Samuel Performance Eye Gel. Something that I felt like was really nice. It absorbed well. Really lightweight. Had a little bit of little shimmer particles in there. Very slight. Enjoyed it. This is the By La Chic Recherche Cream Contour U at Libre's Biofixine has a nice metal cooling tip on the applicator. Um, I like the texture of it, but I don't think I did enough that I will repurchase, but I like the applicator. I did feel like it lasted a long time as well. A couple of creams here. I ran into this little travel size Drunk Elephant Bee Hydra. 
intensive serum. I think it's nice. I don't think it's worth the money though. It's a nice little gel hydration. And this is the Biologique Recherche Cream Dermo Pure Fiante. Um, this I did a whole video on. They reformulated it. I'm not going to repurchase. It, was, it wasn't bad. I think the reformulation is fine. It's just not the same that it was. So I'm, I'm not a fan of it. It's not as creamy. It's more of a gel. I don't really like that about it. So I'm not going to repurchase. But I do have their VG uh, cream for redness right now. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I have that open and it's a lighter formula than this. Um, that is fine. I don't know that it's hydrating enough for me, but it's fine. <laughs> um, okay, a couple more products on skincare. Clinique, take the day off. This is my eye makeup remover. I do believe in using a separate eye makeup remover because it just works better and you don't get those cloudy, fuzzy vision using a cleanser you use for your face. So I like this one. This is a empty of a sunscreen, my Apu Pure Block. SPF 45 daily sunscreen. Love this one. And that is it for said skincare. <laughs> All right, so now into makeup and I'm gonna first start off with the makeup where I made a pretty good dent into the product. I didn't finish it, but I felt like, you know, it's time to go, it's time to move on. I am I like some of these products a lot and others not so much. So. Let's get into this chunk of makeup first, and then I'm gonna follow up with the makeup that I'm decluttering absolutely because I didn't use it that much, didn't end up liking it as, as much as I thought I would, and I have new products, time to make room. But let's first start with the ones that I've either finished or used quite a bit of the product. Starting with complexion. So this is the Chantecaille Just Skin Tint and Moisturizer. I have the shade Alabaster, and you guys can see how thin it is. I use, I end up using a lot of this product, but I do feel like this is well beyond the 12 month expiration date. And I don't know, I just, there's not a lot of product left and I'm actually liking the Future Skin Foundation, the gel foundation better than this these days. Sometimes you just kind of change your preferences and I really fall in love with that one for summer over this one. So I'm going to end up, I'm just going to throw this one out just because I don't feel like there's much life of this left and it's, as I said, expired. A couple of concealers here. This is one of my favorites, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Soak Concealer. I think I've probably used this much of it. Um, I also think this is, yeah, well beyond this. I think this is six months expiration date. Um, I noticed the color is turning a little bit, so I'm, I also have new concealers that I'm liking instead. I think this is, matches my skin tone, but I could have slightly lighter for under my eyes, but I do like this one. I'm just not going to repurchase because there's new stuff out there. Um, I also really like this one. A lot of people like this one as well. The Dior Forever Skin Correct. This is one, this, I have the shade 1CR. And I think I used up, again, about half of it, which is a good amount for a concealer. Um, I really like this one. Uh, again, I think the shade matches my skin, but maybe could be a little bit lighter. Um, but the consistency of this guy was pretty good. I really like the way it wore. Um, just a really flexible formula. This is a brightening pen from Sicily, the Stilo Lumiere, and this guy, I think I've tried to hold on to, but the sponge tip disintegrated. So that should be a sign that it's time to go. It's over six months old. And there's still product in here that you can click out and it kind of comes out, but it's basically not easily, easily usable anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. It's just time to go. I'm not gonna be reaching for it because it's a kind of a pain in the butt to use now. Um, I. I wouldn't recommend it anyway because I mean it did a little bit of brightening but I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> okay eyebrows have a couple brow products here this is an empty a Tom Ford fiber brow gel and taupe um, I have a replacement of this 
What I don't like about it is when you first open a new one, it's like a lot of product goes on and it's almost too much and too dark and overwhelming. But when you start getting to the mid to last part, it's like the perfect amount of product. But this has hold fibers and color, which I is everything I need. I will say people have said the formula has changed and sometimes when it goes out of stock, it takes a long time to replace. This is the Kosas Airbrow and I have the shade Taupe. Um, this guy, I felt like I got through mo pretty much all of it, even though it doesn't look like it. I don't think there's a lot of product left in here. Packaging's cute, but it's really small. 3.7 grams, 0.12 ounces funny if there's less in here actually it doesn't say on the Tom Ford but this wasn't bad it wasn't perfect I won't be repurchasing it um, some of you may like it if you have I felt like I didn't have quite as much control the brush wasn't quite right there's some things off about it but I ended up using a lot of it so I liked it well enough but it's not my perfect brow um, Ooh, another one <laughs> M Cosmetics, this is the Blonde Brow Cream. I talk about differences in brush size. This is like too thin and so like it came off the brush weird, the product, and sometimes it would just put the tiniest amount of product and then sometimes it just put a whole clump. So I don't know, I think the packaging isn't quite there. Um, yeah, so I didn't like this one. Um, eyeliners. I feel like I really... This is like an old Stila. The Stila ones are great. Um, I haven't been using liquid liner in a long time. This is the Intense Black. I don't know. All the, all the writing has come off. And this is the Pat McGrath one. I don't know why I still have it. Like, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I think this one's pretty much dried up. So, I'm throwing it out. The Pat McGrath one did not last long at all. Which stunk. And then, this is the Victoria Beckham Future Lash Mascara. At first, I really liked it and then I started to not like it. And I think it has a really, like, thin wand. And I think it's... I, I still have product left in here, but I just started to really hate how it applied. Like I liked it at first and then it became a real pain to apply mascara with this wand. So I stopped using it and I'm going to toss it now. But you know, I tried. I like how it was comfortable. It didn't hurt my lashes, but it's just didn't turn out how I thought it would be. Okay, I have a giant bag of decluttered stuff makeup. This is the Vive Essential Palette. This one, everything fell out. All the pans fell out when I got it. I had to hot glue them all in. Um, I think the quality of packaging is not great because of that. Um, I don't want to tilt it, but everything had to be hot glued in, all of these shadows. Um, but I do like the shades. I do feel like they're kind of powdery. There's something off about the formula when I applied them. At least the mattes which this palette is all mattes except for three shades and I felt like the shimmers were not refined so I don't use this a lot because of that I had high hopes I really liked the basicness of it but it just not something I reach for so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that I don't recommend this palette um, this was like a little supplemental Danessa Myricks highlighting palette um, this is the very chunky glittery highlighting shades and I'm just, I already have these colors in her big volume three light work palette. So I don't need more of these. I like the idea that you could travel with these if you like the shades, you're a makeup artist, maybe this makes sense, but not really for me. It came with it. This is another basic palette. I know a lot of you like this one. And that's why I picked it up. This is the Latte Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. It's just not something I reach for. I think you can get really pretty looks out of it though. Especially these shimmers. These are nice. And even in the, the like the warm mattes. I thought this was odd. These choices were odd. For a pop of color with this story. I just think it's 
kind of weird, but I like the, the rest of it, and the rest of it makes sense to me. Big pans, nice formula. Even the shimmers I liked. I mean, there's not really a lot of complaints. It's just, it's time to go. It's pretty old. People aren't talking about this one or asking about it anymore, and I don't think it's a helpful comparison to have either. A couple of other palettes. I know these aren't really, these don't really go with my channel. A lot of you guys like come to my channel for luxury makeup, and this is on the lower end. This is BH Cosmetics. I just thought, you know, I do like color. I do have videos where I use a lot of multi-chromes, and some of you guys watch that, some of you don't. But I felt like, like this appeals to me. Um, but I, I like it. I I thought this palette was excellent for the price, and I really liked these colors. I thought they were really beautiful and bold. But I don't reach for them a lot, unfortunately. It's just not something I'm using. This is the pistachio one you guys saw, and then the cotton candy. A lot of beautiful, beautiful pinks. Again, really great formula. This was a really popular collection, the Sweet Shop collection. These are pretty phenomenal formula for the price. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not reaching for them. So I'm, they're time to go, you know? Okay, so I have a, one more sort of, this is a palette I think I got last Christmas and my sister sent me two. I think it was a mistake. She ordered two. I think, yeah, this one of these is broken, but I think the other one she sent me was completely broken. This is the Huda Beauty Nude Medium Palette. It's actually not bad. I just, I don't ha really have much Huda Beauty makeup. Um, and this is nice, but it's too much of the same color for me, this color story, so I wouldn't really reach for it. And I don't think it's very unique. This also looks like kind of the Patrick Ta palette that came out this year, <laughs> the same color story. So I don't feel like it. Um, this is a couple years old now. This is the By Terry Terribly Paris. I don't like the formula of this. I think it's pretty, I think it's luxe, it's heavy, I like the shiny, I like the packaging, it's hard, it's pretty, but it comes with brushes in here, but this just didn't work for me, this formula. It's just, it's got, I don't know if it's a gel in it or lotion or something, but it just doesn't work when you put it on the eye. So I'm going to declutter it because I don't use it. This is one I've been holding on to, but I haven't been using. I like these quints. I feel like I need to resist purchasing them in the future. They're good, but I'm just, I like the idea of these, but unless I really love the colors and I, I do like some of these, I'm just not, I'm not using it though. I think the red is what really throws me off. Like when I look at this palette, I'm like, oh, that red, how am I going to wear that? Um, so the, I don't know if this is a popular one anyway. This is the Rouge Truffle Gar 879 palette and I'm just going to declutter it because I don't think I'm going to use it anymore. A couple of Chantecai duos here. These are the La Chrome Luxe Eye duos. I have the Tibet. And I have Grand Canal. They look pretty. I felt like over time though, the formula wasn't as good. They kind of fell apart a little bit. Like it's just not as pigmented as when I first got them. I don't know if they've dried out. Um, they were pretty at first and now they're just kind of weak. You know what I mean? Like they're really soft, like really subtle now when I swatch them, but there's a lot of glitter. So it's, I don't think this formula, even though I liked it at first, I'm not sure that it's for me. It's like something happened as it got older, just not as bold and it's just all shimmer particle now. So it's kind of odd. So I'm gonna declutter because I just, I find these to be, Shantika's eyeshadows to be very expensive and I just don't get it. I don't think they're worth it. Um, I do love the brand. They have a lot of great products, but for me, the eyeshadows, I've never been like a huge, like, oh. I mean, they do have some great like singles. They do have like their philanthropy collection with the different animals, 
those are better but the, the duos didn't hold up for me so these are my eyeshadow palettes that i'm decluttering we have more makeup to go though all right on the final stretch of makeup let's start with complexion again this is the charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless foundation this is a high coverage foundation i have the shade three cool frond this one started changing colors on me you see that orange so i think it's time to go it says 18 months i'm not sure if i've had it around that time i think i probably at least have I'm not the biggest fan. I mean, I've used it. It's too much coverage and I, it's not the most flattering for me. So I am going to declutter. This is the Aborian CC cream. I think this is my second tube. This only is supposed to last six months. It does have sunscreen in here. So I'm afraid to really keep this any longer. Um, I really like this at first um, before I've tried like other lighter tints. There's a lot more out there these days that that is kind of similar to the finish of this product. So I've been using a lot of other things. I, I still like this. I do feel like I wish this wasn't color changing. I wish there was more shades. It could be better, um, but I think this one's time to go. <laughs> Um, this is like one of those white formulas. It has little pigment beads in it. You mix it up, mix it up, mix it up, and then it kind of changes color. It's really easy makeup. Like you don't really have to think about too much about blending and it looking good because it's such a light coverage. Um, it's kind of those no brainer types of complexion products which is why a lot of people love it. It's been popular for a long time. I think probably one of the most popular from their range of complexion products. Highlighter, this, or no, this is bronzer. I think I still have the highlighter from this brand. This is the Shantikai Radiance Gel Bronzer. Um, I think there's only one color of this because there's no shade name. And this is just a odd, not odd, but odd for me, kind of a red, reddish toned brown and you know it's a nice texture but I don't think this is the right color for me so I haven't been using it really so I'm going to declutter that let's start with these ritual diffuse this is a inner inner glow cream pigments both of these and this is delirium which is this beautiful red orange I really liked it when I got it but I, I have to say I wasn't in love with the texture of this it's kind of a really waxy guy I think the color I made work I don't know it's kind of a strange product to me but I think it's popular one of their more popular products maybe it's just me um these glossier blushes these are their cloud plain ugh cloud paints these are pretty iconic for the brand i was did a whole glossier video tried a bunch of stuff i felt like these uh, are very particular products um they're very liquidy you need a very tiny 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 amount but they're for your cheeks you have to spread them and i felt like well i have to use a lot of product to be able to spread it it's just not I mean, you might think, oh, that looks great, it's pigmented, but like that's way too much. And then you wanna be able to spread a product without being, it's just too pigmented, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like you need to be able to spread it and it look pretty and not overwhelming. <laughs> so this isn't quite a hit for me. I think there, there's so many cream options out there now that I don't know that people are really using this. But that was Haze. This is Haze. And this is Eve. I just thought this is just... You need to give us a little flexibility. Like, I shouldn't have to put a, a minuscule dot to get a good, um, the kind of color I'm looking for. 
you know you want a happy medium where you you have you can apply you know a good drop but it won't be overwhelming you know the last blush product i have is from m cosmetics i thought this would be pretty this is little lilac this is just a tick uh such a sticky texture that i just don't like it um and the dropper is pretty <laughs> odd i don't know there's probably a trick to this but that's the texture when you put it on the cheeks i just feel like it doesn't really dry down stays tacky it's pretty it's got that glass sheen to it a little more user friendly than the cloud paints but it just it stays shiny and tacky and too long okay let's get into brows i have several brow products here of four a lot of these have dried out and that's why I'm throwing them away. This is the Shantikai Waterproof Brow Definer. It has a nice spoolie on the end, but this sort of triangle shape, which is popular, it's like pretty much completely dried out. I'm sure you can melt it down with a lighter, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to toss it. It's time to go. I don't know if I left the lid off says it's supposed to last two years but I've had issues with Shantikai with my eyeliners drying out so I don't know it's probably me this is a Anastasia brow definer little tiny guy that also I think is not the right color also semi dried out this is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is like way too thin for me and I'm out of it. This is the It Cosmetics Brow Power. Also very dried out, so I'm <laughs> getting rid of all those crusty guys. Eyeliner, I do have a pencil from McQueen in New York. I think this is an Asian beauty one. This is actually still working and it's quite nice but I feel like I have enough other eyeliners that I'm gonna go ahead and declutter a couple of mascaras this is the Wander Beauty one it's been over six months and I don't think I like this one it looks I don't know I don't remember it to be honest a little tiny sample of Chanel volume de Chanel I think I like this one I think it dried out on to eyeshadows and stuff eyeshadow sticks uh, a couple more one more liner nyx this like light pink lilac liner it's fine it's just not the right color for me for eyeliner <laughs> these guys i liked when they were still working i guess these are the by terry ombre black stars in different colors here i think this one still works this bronze one that's nice I just, I don't know. These sticks sometimes just, I think this one's dried out. This light pink one. Another front. Ugh, I just broke that. They kind of pop out. <laughs> like for how much money this is, well, it looks like it's still working. These are not perfect products in my opinion. I hate that they pop out and break and all of that. They're just not as convenient to me as I want them to be. They're a little bit annoying. Um, I have some uh, more Ritual Defeat. I think because these are clean formulas, they take a little bit more work. Um, the colors are interesting. I like the, the aesthetic of the brand. Um, I like where they're going, but you gotta think about design with the eyeshadow and it's just very narrow. I know a lot of you guys like, well, if you use this exact brush, you can use it. Like, sure, I have brushes where I can easily go in there. It's just, I don't know. The inconvenience of this, I didn't realize when I ordered it. Also, the way that these look on the eye it's a little bit hard to use. Like they're not uniform on the eye. Um, and I think it's a formula. So I think the formula can be improved. Another eyeshadow. This is one I don't really reach for because I think it's too glittery. The Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame. Ooh, what is this? I think this is just called a pot. 
I don't know, eyeshadow pot. Very glittery. It's almost just straight up glitter and a little bit of coppery shade. I didn't love the shade for me. I didn't love the formula, so I don't reach for it. <sighs> Lip liner. This is some Patrick Ta. I got this this year, so it's not old. Precision Gel Liner. Uh, I think I got this as an eyeliner. And it just, it crumbles really easily. And I had a hard time getting it to stick to my waterline, which is where I wanted to put it. And it's just odd. Like it just, it's almost like a concealer liner. Like it's not right. So I don't use that. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Last things are lip products. I have two. I think I got these for free. Clinique Black Honey. I know this is like old and iconic and I don't really get the hype. It's like a, a tinted balm. I mean, sure, berry tones work for everybody, but I'm not like, I, I think these are okay. I have two of them. <laughs> That I don't really use. This is the NYX Filler Instinct Bitten Pout. And this is like crazily pigmented for like a lip balmy kind of product. It's actually too much for me in the shade I don't really love. So decluttering. This is a Pat McGrath product that I got the wrong shade of. Nude Venus Lip Fetish Divinal Lip Shine. I don't like the texture of this. There's other better products out there that are much nicer and creamier, but I mean, it gives some nice shine, but I just don't think her price tag is worth it. I don't know, especially the shade. I just I'm not really a fan of, I don't really use it. All right, guys, I think I, I covered all my decluttering makeup. That is a lot of stuff. I feel bad for throwing that much stuff out. But I know in my hearts of hearts, I'm probably not going to reach for all that makeup anytime soon. I know this the new stuff comes in, you got to get rid of some of that old, at least in my opinion. Like I like collecting some brands and having like a lot of their stuff. But if I'm just trying stuff for this channel and I don't love it, there's no point in me keeping it really, especially if it's not like a good reference product that people are really using or talking about anymore. It's just, it's gotta go. I did so many swatches with you guys. I know that was a really long video, but hopefully it gave you a good update. If you're thinking about picking up any of the stuff, a lot of the stuff I showed you is not new. It's old. It's time to go. Um, if you guys love any of the stuff that I'm throwing out, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up subscribe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.